64-bit legend. Welcome. Legend of the game like GoldenEye, I'm more than right. Yeah. The perfect dart is dreams that seem to come to light. 64-bit, the shit, it's as real as it yeah. gets. We can yeah. talk sports, yeah. games, and music, take your pick. Yeah. Point yeah. with the news, pull up and crack a brew. Crack. Smoke one with the crew, Smoke. tune in and take a view. Watch. We here to raise the bar from the lowest yeah. mark. Sit your yeah. ass down and listen, it's time for the show to start. Show to start. Show to start. Show to start. Are we rolling? Yeah. Oh, hello, gentlemen. <laughs> I didn't know we were rolling. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to another episode of 64 Bit Legends. I am Bobby Caboose. As always, looking for that hot tag. It was a little late today, but Melvin Troy. <sighs> You're doing the Jetta, Jetta boy? Yeah, fucking? it's a Jetta. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> That's the best way to start any... Uh... With the, with the Jetta? Yeah, you got to get... Jetta boys? Yeah, you got to get do a little Jetta boy. Uh, we, could, we could maybe get a Jetta boy on uh, for special guests. We should. We should get a we should get a couple well, we, we can try to get one. A Jetta or two. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, the star of um, House Hunters. Oh, that's that right. On there too. We've been meaning to do that for a minute. I know. <laughs> we have to do that. we got to figure a time out to... Have a watch along for Detroit Lake Life, even though he's not on a lake. And I think there was yeah. one house on a river or something. <laughs> yeah, he. Um, I was. Uh, you know what? I was. I was going down the rabbit hole of logging into like old accounts of mine because I have like old emails. Yeah, and there was one that I was trying to get into that's connected to like an old YouTube account. Okay, and it was a Hotmail email. Yeah, that I hadn't used. And so back in the day on YouTube, you can sign up with – before uh, Google bought them, you just sign up with an email. Yeah. So I had a, a Hotmail, and I stopped using the Hotmail. And then when Google bought uh, YouTube, you could no longer log in without a Gmail. Like It had to be mm-hmm. linked to a Gmail. So I had to go through this whole process of – Reclaiming my Hotmail, which I had logged into forever, but that was a pain in the ass. Yeah. Luckily, it's Microsoft owned. Yeah. And then I have a Hotmail as well. Yeah. the The recovery wasn't too bad because uh, I found out it was connected to some other accounts that I had. Mm-hmm. And then I had to go through a process where I had to take the account, get it verified that the YouTube account, log in with the Hotmail. Then I had to essentially make a new Gmail that was going to swap out everything associated with the Hotmail. Okay. Sounds just to like get a, into... Sounds like a process. It was. And that process gets me to the YouTube channel that has the official Melvin Troy pr- spelled properly from way back in the day that has nothing on it. It's got like 100 subscribers, but there's nothing on there anymore. There was at one time, but I think it got dumped. So that was... Anyway... I was logging into all that stuff, and I tried to get into a live journal. Oh, God. And uh, that's been bought by some Russian company, and I can't get into no. it anymore. But that, there, was a, there was a live journal. There was at least two live journals I had that have, like, and really what I want to go to is go to the old comments. Yeah. Because people comment. Yes. Not so much the stupid shit I would write, but just. Like people's face melting and stuff? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I was hoping to get into there so we could read some of it. That would be great. And I can't. It's oh, it's gone. It's that gone would that me. would have been amazing. It's gone. That like would have been space. an episode on its own. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's that was what I was kind of hoping to do. Was uh, I'm sure there's some other shit that I'll find, um, but yeah. Anyway, yeah, it just reminded me when you sp- uh, talked about the the Jettos. Yeah, the Jettos. Yeah, we should have a Jetto on. Mm-hmm. They might be entertaining. Um, you know what's not entertaining? What? Kentucky. Really? Yeah. Uh, you know, I went there over the weekend. Yeah. And um, it was fun and all, right? Mm-hmm. But talk about being in the middle of nowhere. Like, in the middle of fucking nowhere. Like, isn't isn't that the idea, though? Did you go camping? No. We, oh. go, we went to visit my aunt, oh. who lives down there. My aunt and my cousin, um, they own like 100 acres. Okay. And so they live on the same property. And we just went down to visit because mm-hmm. we. I don't think I've seen my aunt since my mom died. Okay. So like my sister wanted to go down there, um, to uh, to visit. So we stayed in Raywick, Kentucky. Raywick, Kentucky. Okay. Yep. I have no idea. The city of 153 people. Really? Yep. Okay. 
Um, it was the middle of nowhere. The Airbnb was in the middle of the woods. Oh, so you got an Airbnb, yes. though. Okay, got it. It was like a cabin in the woods. All right. Um, which, the inside was very nice, mm-hmm. I have to admit. The outside kind of looked, you know, like you couldn't really tell how nice it was inside from the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it took at least like 45 minutes to get to anywhere. Like, oh, yeah. Whether you wanted to get something to eat, if you wanted to go to the grocery store, mm-hmm. uh, if you needed to get gas, whatever. It was like 45 minutes away. You could go. You could drive an hour without seeing another car. Wow. You had to watch for deer all the fucking time. Um. I had one of the scariest drives in my life after having a few drinks at my aunt's house, um, or my cousin's house, technically, but um, driving back, there's no straight roads. Everything winds. Okay. And so I had to go, and there's no street lights. You're the only car on the road for the <laughs> most part. And a lot of it, like the back roads, are only one lane road. So if another yeah. car is coming towards you, you have to like merge off, but mm-hmm. there's no shoulder. <laughs> and it there's like ditches or the fo- side of a fucking mountain. Oh, so nice. It, it was fucking terrifying, man. I couldn't go more than like 30 miles an hour. I was, and then it started fogging, and it was nighttime, <laughs> and I'm like, I saw some deer I had to fucking stop for. And they looked like ghosts because they were in the fog with my lights, and they just looked like ghost deer. And then they fucking ran off. But um, we go to this cafe. It's called the Bacon Creek Cafe. Okay. Guess where it's located? I don't. Bacon, bacon Creek. Oh, Bacon Come Creek. On. Okay. Yeah. I should have known. So we go to the Bacon Creek Cafe, and there's three of us. It's my sister, myself, and my girlfriend, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, we walk in, and there's probably like. 15 to 20 people in there, dude, everyone fucking stopped and looked at us. Really? Like, everyone. I mean, the diner was probably not bigger than this basement. Okay. So it was a small diner, but they all just stopped what they were doing, looked at us, and then, like, we just stood there, and the waitress was like, oh, you can can take a seat anywhere, right? So we sit down, and this old man, like, probably 65, 70 years old, is going to every single table, and he starts with our table. Mm -hmm. He's got a hat on. He takes his hat off. Okay. And he goes, how do you like my new haircut? Uh-huh. And we're like, looks fine. You know, he, he's like, I just got my haircut. Done. Was it an actual haircut? Yeah. Oh, I, I thought like, it was like a joke. He's no, like bald or no, something. Okay. No, he was like, <laughs> how do you like my haircut? I mean, it looks great. <laughs> okay. You know, and he's like, I used to go to a barber. Now they're called stylists. <laughs> great, man. He's going to like every table showing him his hair. Like he was so proud. Is he autistic or something? Dude, he's just old. I don't know. And he's old and from a weird town. And so I was joking with my sister and uh, my girlfriend. I was like, you know, if this happened where we're from, people would be like, dude, go sh- fuck yourself. Like, get the fuck yeah. away from me. Yeah, cool. But it's cool like, haircut. It's like bro. small town, you know, crazy um, friendly, I guess, I don't if that's what you want to call it. But then... One lady comes up to us before she leaves, and she, like, has her to go, and she almost, like, gives us, like, a little bow type Mm -hmm. thing, and she's like, I can tell you're out of towners in her, like, hick voice. Yeah. Um, Enjoy our, enjoy our little town. Okay. Thanks, you know, appreciate it. That's nice. She she leaves. That sounds like the beginning of a horror movie, though. I'm going to be honest. 100%. Because (laughs) all these people are, like, no, like, younger than 65. Yeah. So it's like I was telling uh, them, um, I was like, "This is like us coming into this diner and never leaving. We just age, <laughs> and that's how like that's the horror film. Yeah. You know, you're you like you know now you can't leave type thing. Yeah, like, and the guy just like, keeps coming around and asking about his haircut. Yes. What do you think about my haircut? It's like you've asked me this for a hundred years. Yes. And then so after the lady says something, an old man comes over and he's like. He's like, spend some money in my town. And I'm okay. like, all right, well, <laughs> there's nothing much in your town except this very fucking Bacon Creek Cafe. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, very weird experience there. We end up going kayaking right after that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, how, like, I don't know if you've ever been kayaking or, or, or tubing down a river or something. Well, yeah. There's usually durations. Like, you can do, like, a four-hour, six-hour, eight-hour, whatever. Yeah. So it was my first time kayaking, and, like, we didn't know how long it would take. So we did, like, the four-hour four hour thing that's supposed to take, obviously, four hours, right? Yeah. So we're like, okay, that, that shouldn't be bad. So we start kayaking and shit, and, like, the guy's like, when you see the bridge, give me a call. Because, mm-hmm. like, that's pretty much, you know, you're pretty much done. The mm-hmm. landing spot's, like, right past the bridge. And so we're, we're going, and we're having a good time and stuff. And all of a sudden, like, we see a bridge. 
Okay. And we're like, is that the same bridge that he told us to call? Well, we didn't see any other bridge. Mm-hmm. This shit took like an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, we're like, dude, like, what the yeah. fuck? Like, we were, <laughs> okay. I mean, you could like stop and stuff. And he yeah. told us about like, I forget what he called it. It wasn't like a watering hole, but it was like some kind of term like that where you could go swim. Okay. And like, but like, we didn't see an opportunity to like get off like that. Okay. And he was like, yeah, you, you know, he's like, oh, I guess you guys didn't want to do that. And we're like, well, we never saw it. Like, <laughs> And we were, like, shocked that it was, like, over. <laughs> so, you know, it, we ended up having, like, a whole, like, extra bunch of time. <laughs> so we just went back to the the cabin and just hung out. We watched all four of the Nightmare, with Elm, Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect to watch in this small little town. Yeah. So, but have, I've never seen them. I've seen parts of most of them like michael myers is like somewhat legitimately scary you know it's a guy like a serial killer dude nightmare on elm street is fucking like it's like not like not cringy but like what's the word it's um corny corny yeah 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 Yeah, i i think um the nightmare on elm street the problem with that is the concept is good think about this a guy like Child murderer, pedophile, whatever. Uh, the town turns on him, and they're like, "Get this guy out of here!" They chase him into a warehouse. He's a monster, and they kill him. And he gets revenge by now tormenting the children of the people that killed him. Yeah, in their dreams. So like, that's how he gets his but revenge. There was no backstory, even in the first one. They didn't explain anything. They didn't explain that part. No. When do they explain that? Because that's how I remember it, it, seeing like, it. I, I I was like, unless I'm like, I just wasn't paying attention. But like, yeah. it like just jumped into it. And I'm like, I kept asking like my sister. I'm like, when do they tell the backstory? Like, yeah, because yeah, I was always told like you got uh, like, and the mom says it like middle of the movie. Yeah, but she like she's drunk mm-hmm. and like then she ends uh, she ends up like passing out and like you don't know if that was the truth or not because she's like hammered oh i see and it's yeah, just like really weird like that they don't really touch on it too much because I, I i i thought the concept is interesting and then on top of it they can do like otherworldly thing because it's happening in your dreams and it's like and it's it truly is like you walk away from that as a kid it was kind of creepy because it was like oh that means a bad dream isn't just a dream yeah. like that's like you know so th- there's a good concept there, and the first one, from what I could tell, was actually kind of scary. Now, Grant, I have not seen this in probably 20 years, but that's the. But then later, like everything from the from Freddy Krueger's face, uh, yeah. and some of the other, it gets so phony looking yeah. that it's like, okay, this is like a cartoon character, right? Like I think they literally did make a cartoon. Like it is, it's really bad. And like even the original, I'm, like we were just all like looking, like was this that scary in the eighties? Like I think it was just cheap. Yeah, I think it was just a cheap horror movie that they could pump out. And then, but then there was some attempts because like Wes Craven did it, and he's known to be because he did, he did Halloween, right? No, no, that's, that's John, John Carpenter. I'm sorry, John Carpenter. What did Wes Craven? Wes Craven did something else. What else did he do? I don't know, be related to Sam Craven? Uh, probably. That's why he was so scary. Um, hold on a second. Russ, I know he did, uh, later he did Scream, but at that point he was kind of like playing on his... Uh, yeah, he did a Nightmare on Elm Street. What's that? He did Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. But yeah, but I was thinking he also may have done Halloween or something. Oh, I don't know. Uh, he did, let's see, per, no, no, personal life, okay. Uh, Hills Have Eyes, okay, that's that's a well-known horror movie. Nightmare on Elm Street, Hills Have Eyes Part 2. He did Swamp Thing? Okay, I remember Swamp Thing. That was kind of like a thing for a minute. Uh, he did The Shocker, that's two in the pink, one in the sting. Yep. Um, but yeah, this I remember in 94, I would have been, was it 94? Nightmare on Elm Street was 84. 10-year anniversary? He did... Yeah, I think it was around here. It was New Nightmare. And New Nightmare was like, because, no, he did the original, and then he did a bunch of sequels that were bullshit. Yeah, were we, watched, we, watched, we, we watched one through four. Okay, so I think 
I think one through four. Cause I, I gotta, I gotta follow these because it's always hard to follow like which one's which because they'll call it like, oh, Freddy's dead, and then he's like, it's like number two, and then number three is like Freddy Krueger Part Three. I think this was just one, two, three, four. I don't was know it? if there was any subtitles. Um, where's the? Hold on, I'm trying to look up the. Oh, this is the 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 main movie list of Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh. Film series, not characters. I don't want to. Think. Okay, Nightmare. Okay, Nightmare on Elm Street eighty four. Oh, I guess there is eighty five. Was a Nightmare on Elm Street two? Freddy's Revenge that came out a year later. Nightmare on Elm Street three, a Dream Warrior. So you and then you watch Nightmare on Elm Street four, Dream Master. Yep. So these ones, I uh, from what I understand, and then there's Dream Child. Yeah, I didn't watch that one. Then there's Final Nightmare ninety one, and then New Nightmare. So New Nightmare was the one that kind of like. Maybe or is either that one or Final Nightmare is kind of what put it on as a child into my head. Yeah, because I was born in '86, so a lot of this other shit I was like way too young to even know. And uh, it was, and and the idea was it was I think it's New Nightmare is the one where it's kind of a reboot where the concept is Freddy Krueger is a movie character only, but then becomes real. And so it makes it and – and he looks way more scarier and more yeah. realistic. It's like a kind of like a weird reboot. And uh, that one apparently is well-regarded. And then there's Freddy vs. Jason, which I, that one I've seen in full. I saw Freddy vs. Jason. Rey Mysterio is uh, Freddy's stunt double in that movie. Oh, really? I just learned that the other day. Did not know that. But um, but yeah, so Nightmare on Elm Street. So you saw number one, which that's pretty straightforward. Then number two, Freddy's Revenge. Now that one, I don't remember the concept. The man of your dreams is back. Freddy's Revenge. Yeah, dude. I, I was pretty much just high this whole time when we were watching <laughs> them. So like, I was like, whatever. This is fucking stupid. Um, I just know Johnny Depp was in the first one. Was he in the first one? Yeah. Because he was in, a, I think he was in a later one too. Because he's supposed to be like Freddy Krueger's son or something. Wasn't it? <laughs> it wasn't Freddy Krueger's son. No, he was in Final Nightmare. He was in the first one, too. Yeah, so he was in that one, and then he was in Final Nightmare. Well, it has a C next to it. I don't know what that means, though. What does C mean? Cunt. Oh, it's a cameo. He did a cameo. Okay, so he's only in the first one. Yeah. What was the one with the... What was the one where... Secret Window? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> what was the Freddy Krueger one where he sucks the kid into the video game? Did you watch that one? I don't think so. Maybe that was Final Nightmare. So maybe that would have been five. I can't. Dude, he he was like controlling one like a puppet in one of them. And he had like the tendons of his arms like ripped out. Yeah. So like the tendons were like like shooting towards the sky, like towards the ceiling, right? Yeah. But like he was in school. So all the classmates, because he's dreaming, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the classmates don't aren't in his dream. Yeah, so yeah. when they're watching him, he's just like this <laughs> with, with nothing. And then it'll flash to his dream where yeah. the, the blood and stuff's going. <laughs> but he, the other kids are like, what is he doing? I just, my thing with that was like, I just didn't, it was just, a, it was just always a setup for some weird, violent goof thing yeah like I, I that's what i never i never liked those movies because of that because it would be like um see i th- i like how bad some of like the teen slasher movies are like how ridiculous like it they're so stupid that it's like entertaining like have you ever seen the babysitter no that's that one's on netflix Is that it's the like, one with vin diesel no oh um it's like a b film oh. but like it's just like a kid you know, getting baby like his babysitters like in this cult, and like it, they just kill each other and shit. It's like weird. Okay, you see a lot of those like but I it's, gotta it's so over the top. There's there's and gotta be acting. there's gotta be see that's that's what drives me crazy the bad acting the bad acting is terrible. Perfect example of a nice I guess you can call it a horror movie. I don't know it would it would have been in the horror section at a blockbuster, but Lake Placid. The, yeah, the never, crocodile. Never seen it. Now that movie, it's about a giant crocodile, crocodile yep. in a lake called Lake Placid, and it's got really good actors in it. I mean, they're not top tier, but yeah. they're like 
Like Betty White is the one mm -hmm. who like owns the crocodile as they find out. Yeah. Or like the president of the United States from Independence Day. Yeah. He's like a game warden. And like Oliver Platt is like the <laughs> master crocodile hunter who comes in to hunt this I mean, crocodile. This is almost like, a big enough cast for like Dunson checks in too. It's this movie everyone is a great actor. Stark stunned cast. And it's funny. Like, but it doesn't try to be funny. Right. It just got good dialogue. Mm -hmm. On top of the fact, it's them trying to hunt a giant crocodile. Yeah, like it's it's a it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Oh, I thought you were going the other way with this. I thought you were going to be like, man, it's fucking terrible. No, these actors, you know, it's, the, it's just the dialogue sucks. No, the dial, the, it's so well acted. The dialogue is not amazing on its own. The the script, I should say, is not amazing on its own. But they get such good actors that they're able to make it interesting. And that's that's my problem with a lot of these horror movies. It's like, make it – doesn't need to be crazy. Just make it interesting. Don't just give me just bullshit of like, oh, man. Like, okay, Friday the 13th, right? The whole gimmick of the first probably two is who? where is it going to come from? Who is it? Who mm -hmm. is – Who's the killer? Because you find on the first one, the killer isn't really Jason. It's his mother yeah. getting revenge. Jason doesn't really show up. I think then the second one, because it's found out it's the mother in the first one, then you're like, well, who is it this time? Then you realize it's Jason. Mm -hmm. And then he doesn't even get the hockey mask until like three or four. And then by that point, it's fucking retarded. Right. Halloween is a standard thing of like, oh, man, this guy this is a lumbering oaf. Mm -hmm. But then he can kind of like show up and like you know it's just kind of like creepy but it even that was okay how many times are you going to like turn the corner he's there like you can only do that so many times dude you can do it all the time no because there's there's yeah you can because there's there's shadows and darkness and you can hide it, anywhere it's too much no and then and then on the, and then on the flip side and he's not always there only when you hear the music Oh yeah, the ch -ch no, that's that's Friday the Thirteenth. What's the what's the Halloween the, one? The uh, uh, oh, the piano. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. That's right. Yeah. Well, what's Freddy Krueger then? He just shows up. Yeah, he just shows up. Well, no, he is a music too, and it's kind of similar to the Halloween one. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know that. He just always swears. He's like, "Yeah, take that, bitch," yep. and then he's like, "Whoa, man, this guy's wild." And then he lifted up his shirt, and he's got like faces of all his victims. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I'm like, dude, this is stupid. <laughs> you know the one the one that I didn't mind, even though it does fall into this, is uh Chucky. Because I was always terrified of Chucky, man. So was I. So the first two I was scared, and then later on, as I was a teenager, I went and watched it out of like a weird like I want to conquer the fear yeah. type of thing. Like I'm old enough. I shouldn't be as afraid of Chucky. I'm right. fifteen years old now. Yeah. And so I remember watching the first two. And the first two, it's 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 in this weird the way it's shot and filmed, it's filmed in a similar style as like Problem Child, where everything's kind of like super bright. Right. And it's like in this hyper I don't know what you would call it, almost cartoonish way, mm -hmm. which kind of makes it creepy. Um, like the one scene where he kills the teacher with the ruler or whatever, it, I think, or scissors. I can't remember. It's been so long. But then later, Bride of Chucky. Bride of Chucky? That's the Bride one he gets. Yeah. yeah. So, seed. Yeah, yeah. So Bride of Chucky was good because then it started to incorporate, like, now there's, like, a purpose. Like, the whole time he's just trying to, the first two, he wants to get inside the child's body. Yeah. But then he's like killing people and it doesn't really, it's just kind of unnecessary. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third one is, because I, I think it's the end of the, the second. goes to the military school. Yeah. And he's already been, he's got to be like repatched together because yeah. at the end of the second one, he's like torn apart, mm -hmm. I think. Um, and then that one, I don't, that one was interesting because it was a little darker, but uh it didn't really make a lot of sense. It's like, why are we still chasing down this guy? And then he tries to get himself into like a young black kid or something yeah. like that, which sounds weird as I say that, but you know what I mean? The soul, his soul he's trying to get yes. in there. Um, and uh, yeah, so there was, but the Bride of Chucky actually had like, oh, okay, there's more like 
they add a little bit of comedy to it and it has a better like it has some dialogue to it and there's an overall purpose yeah like he's he's playing an old girlfriend this whole time mm-hmm. so he can get into another body and was going to ditch her and you know that 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 played off itself very well so and then the seed they have a trans baby and it's just a complete comedy well they find out it's a trans at the end well right? yeah, it, well so they basically chucky and i think her name's tiffany yeah um they uh both could just go back and forth they're like i want a son i want a daughter yeah so, like, she would dress him up as a girl and he would dress him up as, and then yeah he ends up being just the trans yeah he's like a split personality and yeah it doesn't and um then there was another one after that but the um the first one like my brother and my dad made me watch that when i was like five or six and i was fucking terrified oh really no, see, I I only I, seen it on yeah. TV. Yeah, like, I I I watched it very young, and it's still like I don't like watching that movie. Like it just bothers me. I I would see it on TV and was kind of scared of it, and I'd see the commercials, and that, that creeped me out on uh, its mm-hmm. Um, but my family really wasn't into those types of movies. Yeah. So you know, for me, I guess what what I would see a lot of was like I remember being young. At that age, and I saw like Silence of the Lambs, you know, or Misery. Yeah. So it was like shit like that. Right. It's like that's more of my that, and that's honestly, if I want, and I know they're not really like horror movies per se, mm-hmm. but they're dark, and yeah. there's like, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm still always looking over my shoulder if I go somewhere if someone's gonna kidnap me in a van, yeah, and try to skin me, you know, that's yeah. put you, you in a hole, yeah. You never know. You never know or what could end up break happening. Break your legs and read you stories. Yeah, there's that. I mean, that's well, yeah, that's that's definitely something uh, to be to be worried about. That's why I just watched like Dunstan checks in. See, I don't do that. And the Brady Bunch movie, and the Brady, the, a very Brady sequel. See, and I don't the Ninja Turtle movie. I feel that that you're living a lie. No, man, Damn. I'm not living a lie. I'm living the fucking truth because those movies are the heart and soul of America. Did you hear about, I don't know if it's true, but there's a rumor. Maybe I should Google this to back it up. But they're speaking of Ninja Turtles. So they did a Ninja Turtle movie. I heard there's a rated R one coming. Yes, that's the one I was going to talk about. Do you know what that's about? I I do, but I don't know if you know. Is it like Rape in April? No, no, it's not they about They could that. call it Rapeful. So it's called The Last Ronin. And so what had happened is, is back in the 80s. Yeah. There was always a comic book yes. that had been going on up until they sold everything to Nickelodeon or now Paramount or whoever owns that. And uh, they, and the comic book was always darker, it was always dark, yeah. much more violent. And then, the, but they sold part of the rights for the TV show as a children's cartoon, but they still operated independently for the comic book. And then when they made the movie, the reason they didn't have like Rocksteady and Bebop in the movie is because the car, the, the company does the cartoon didn't make the movie. Right. It was the creators. Uh, who is it here? Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. Yeah. Because it was the um, it was the highest grossing independent film until Blair Witch Project came around. Yeah. Because they did it. They kind of did it on their own. They financed it through their company, and uh, and that's why the first one in particular is a little darker. Yeah. Than the others. Now, after the success, that's when they were kind of got more pressure. They got more money, and they're like, "Well, maybe make it more for kids right. a little bit." Which the first one was still kind of, mm-hmm. you know. But anyway, so they continued to do the writing. I just watched a whole documentary on this. That's why I know. So they continued doing their comic book uh, for years, uh, up until somewhere around the '90s, and then it took longer and longer for them to because they would make each of the issues themselves. Yeah. And so what ends up happening? is they split and they kind of give the rights off to uh, other people for their company to make comic books. So they still own that. And then there's just still make, and they're still more adult and they're black mm-hmm. and white and everything. And they still have the cartoon. And then they reboot the cartoon a few times. They make another movie, blah, 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 blah. And then they finally just sell everything and they split. They break up the partnership because they can't get along no more. And they go their own ways. and They sell everything to Nickelodeon. Well, they get back together because they the the main story of their comic book from the original comic book, mm-hmm. not all the other tales of the Ninja Turtles and blah blah blah, all the spinoffs. 
Theirs were not, was never finished. It left on the cliffhanger because they split up. So they got back together and they did one called The Last Ronin. And it's a dark one and it's only, it's about the last surviving turtle. Okay. And I think it's Raphael, I want to say. I don't oh, remember. Oh, yeah, because he's the badass. Yeah, I think that's, why did I click on Google Books? But um, I was trying to find the, here, Wikipedia. I think it's Raphael, but he's he's the only last living turtle. Uh, let's see, the grandson of Shredder and the son of Karai running the city with meticulous fascism and total. Yeah, a lone turtle. Maybe you don't know right away. Oh, uh, it's eventually, oh, Michelangelo huh, is the last surprising. turtle. Okay. So anyway, but I guess that you don't know that right away. Because, again, in the original comic book, they didn't have different colors. Yeah. They were just black and white. And they would just, you just know based off the weapon who right. they were. So this guy is the last one. They come together and they close out the original story. And it is a dark film. And they're supposed to make a movie on that, which I think would be really cool. Now, so, is it supposed to be live action? Yes. Okay. Because I don't like the CGI stuff. Well, well, are they going to be CGI? I, I liked how the original ones were shot. I like don't people in costumes. Know. Um, I never watched the CGI ones just because I thought they looked too stupid. Oh, here's oh, I kind of spoiler alert warning for anyone listening. This was not supposed to know right away. The decision to make Michelangelo the last of the surviving turtles was made by Eastman and Waltz when they asked why Michelangelo was chosen by the writers. The simplest answer is that Mikey was the brother we figured no one would expect. So it's supposed to be a surprise. Whoops. Yeah. I just spoiled that. Um, the happy go lucky party dude is now Rambo. Um, so apparently there is a sequel is announced. Uh, there's an RPG that's set to come out. Uh, film. Here we go. Uh, by Paramount Pictures. It was in development April. The film produced uh, will receive an R rating and will be live action. That's what I was looking for. So it'll be live action. But Woo! I don't know if they're going to put costumes together. Or they should. What. They should get Kino and have him dress up again because he was one of the turtles in the first one. Yeah, that would be that'd be cool. Well, you know. There's some good stuff coming out. I'm excited for You got Deadpool Wolverine coming yeah. back. That's next month. That fucking, um, uh, there's a movie called Bike Riders coming out this week. I, I wanted to see that. that. Really? Yeah. It looks it looks pretty good. Okay. It's rated R. It's about a biker gang. So. I can dig it. Two things on that. I think it could be because it's the, the what's his name? I got to pull it up because I can't think of his name. Uh, the, one of the actors. Was it called Bikers? Yeah. Uh, Hardy. Are you talking about yes, Hardy? Tom Hardy. Yeah. I think he works as as a biker, but there's the other character, or the other actor. I mean, I don't like him, and he played like Elvis, and he just comes across he comes across way too soft to be this hardened biker. Uh, let me see if I can find a trailer. Is this yeah. the trailer? Yeah, maybe. Austin Butler, this guy. So let's hold on. Let me, uh, yeah, I was gonna go see this. Hold on, it's kind of loud. <laughs> let, me, let me fix this. Um, yeah, so here's... Let's take a look at this trick. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... Because I've seen this same trailer. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe I'll change my mind. But let's just see. It's The Bike Riders is yeah. what it's called. Yeah, same thing. I'm thinking of starting a riding club. So Why? So apparently this is supposed to take place in the 60s, which... To me, uh, I have a book that Hunter Thompson wrote called The Hell's Angels, and it's yeah. about the Hell's... He he hung out with the Hell's Angels back in the... I don't know if it was the late 50s, early 60s. It was one. It was his very first book he ever wrote. Right. And uh, it's very interesting to see, but I know that the biker... Bikers became a thing after um, World War II. I was going to say 9-11. No, no, no. They've already been around. But it was a lot of soldiers. They didn't know what to do with themselves, and they just, you know, decided to go a little crazy. Yeah. Um. So this is supposed to take place in '65. Um. So let's see. All those clubs do is sit around talking about motorcycles. That's what we do. It's fucking. Uh, okay. Uh, what's his name? Buell. He went to our school. Mr. Green. Oh, Mr. Green. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Okay. So, so, so far from what I'm seeing, though. They're wanting to start their own club separate of the Hells Angels. They're already bitching about the Hells Angels. So that takes care of it. But this guy, I don't like this guy. 
This Austin Butler, he's too soft. He's got a fake mustache on that doesn't even fit for him. He's too well-groomed. He's too pretty. He's too small. He's too much of a waif. Look at him. Hold on. They don't belong nowhere else, so they belong together. Because you're the man in charge. Look at all these other people. I'm John. Everyone's got a hardened edge to him. You're the man. Rough and tumble. And this softy. Maybe he's a softy in the movie. Ugh. Maybe. You ever see Alpha Dog? Fucking JT. Yeah, but that's, that's different. He was Those are soft. rich kids. He was soft. This guy, this guy does not sell me as a badass. He was soft. He was no Johnny True Blood. Oh. I'm Ben. Oh, he's just too. He's, ugh. Ugh. God. It's I, you, I, you lost me. Go go back to his face real quick. Oh, oh wait, I gotta. The man, no. This one or the what, other one? The other. Like. Oh. What? I'm Ben. I could tell you someone he looks like. I know, and that's why I also don't like it. I know. Do you know the person? I wonder if we're talking about the same person. The I'm- one that thought he was one for a while? Breaking legs? No. Oh, who? I, I'll tell you after because I don't want to say his name on here. I'm trying to think who else it would be. Did we go to school with him? No. Oh. Hmm. Did we hang out with him a lot, though, for a period? No. Oh. All right. Well, then I'm really lost. Novak? No. Oh, well, I, I guess know. I could say his first name. Yeah, go ahead. Marco. <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> oh, you're he right. He just needs his glasses. Yeah, I can see a little bit. I can see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, yeah, so I can Marco's see. Marco's in the movie, and you don't like him. No, I, I don't like, not that I don't like the person that you're talking about. I don't like this guy in the movie. It's the same person. No, it's not. It's just a resemblance. I mean, it's not even like a... He probably has a brother. It's not even like a bad... It's not even like a bad... I just don't think that this guy, this Austin Butler, fits the vibe of being like a hardened biker. Maybe he's bad not, though. Your boyfriends are getting into trouble. I'm going to I'm I'm break up that fight. I'm going to beat everyone's ass, even though I'm the smallest guy around. What the hell were you thinking back then? No, I said I saw you scoring off of them guys. Yeah, I'm a tough guy. I'm gonna be fighting, even though I got look. Look, you at, like Tom Cruise? They're, they're too. He's a small guy. I don't like Tom Cruise. Me either. But, but, and he wouldn't fit for this role either. But look at it. He's supposed to have been in a fight and got all fucked up. He's got barely any blood on his face because they can't they can't ruin his pretty he, face. He wiped it off. It's dry now. What do I need to think for? Fuck this. Yeah, you and me, kid. And he's a sucker. Johnny always loved Benny. This is our family. Forever. Uh, hey! I told you to take that I'll let you know off. if the soft dude dies. You have to kill me to get this jacket off. Uh, and all of this could be so good if they just got a different actor for it, that it's guy. It's gonna be a good movie. He's supposed to be the young green guy that's got a. He's got a bit of a soul. He's the. Co- Who do he, they get? Elijah Wood. He's he's essentially in the story. He's the collegial, whatever it was. Collosional. Collosional. C. C. He's supposed to be C from a Bronx Tale, and he's he's and being like led C? astray. That made sense in that movie because it he fit the look. Not this. You got to get. Maybe there's a backstory on like maybe his father is a bus driver and he's you, like, hey, I don't want you hanging out with these people. This is supposed but to then be, there's a fucking biker next door that takes him under his wing because he covered up you something. You need to get some Illinois white trash to play the main character. Young white trash. Who, like, Elijah Wood? No, he's not young. He's like 40. This, yeah, but he looks young. young. No, what? Not really. Ben Savage? No, because he's Fred got, Savage. No, because they're they look kind of Jewish, and I don't think the, the Santa Claus are very kid friendly to the Jewish people. What? Which one? The Santa Claus kid. Thurman Merman. <laughs> I think Thurman Merman no. would make more sense. Honestly, Thurman Merman would <laughs> not make, make bad way more Santa. Sense. The Santa Claus. That kid, Dunson checks in kid. No, I don't even know what he looks like now. He's probably too old. He's probably like sixty. He's not. He was like eight. <laughs> Macaulay Culkin. Macaulay Culkin would work. Macaulay Culkin would definitely work, but he's like 40-some right now. He's, he's 41. Old. And he's he's showing his age right now. He's 40. Mm. Well, they could CGI him and make him look 12 again. I I just think that this is a bad this is a bad pick. It's fine. It is such it's a bad fine. pick. It's going to be a good movie. I can feel it. 
Everything about it could be good. Look at the, look at that guy. Look at the ginger next to Tom Hardy here. He's supposed to be young, and he's weather beaten. He looks real. He's been out there. This guy. He's supposed to be a young buck. Yeah. So you get an older actor like Elijah Wood. I just think that. I don't want any trouble here. You know what would have been or good? Or James Woods. You know who would have been good for this? Who? Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf would be perfect for the for the younger I main think character. James Woods would be better. Because Shia LaBeouf has like a rougher kind of like hardened exterior. This Austin Butler is too much of a pretty boy. It, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. They should have got Efron. Efron would be better. I agree. They Efron should have got be Michael Sarah. Michael Sarah would be better. That's no, what I'm he saying. Wouldn't. He looks white trash enough. He'd be perfect. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He does. He's a white trash piece of shit. He looks like a nerd. He, yeah, white trash nerd <laughs> piece of shit is Michael Sarah. No, that's him. Or Fogel. Fogel would be great. I'd take Fogel yeah. over Hello, fucking Italy. Austin Butler. What about the bar? Find no, the they can't be. We gotta go. Yeah, now there's now a division because. They're scared of us. The young kid doesn't like it. It's inspired by true events. These young guys. They ain't gotta follow nobody except somebody who can hold their own. The club. And his his hair is too like fucking manicured. It's ah, uh, it's too much. It's, it's gonna, too. It's gonna be a good movie. I'm telling. I you. I will not watch this. I will refuse. All right. I refuse. Well, you're missing out just like on the cheap time of Boy Meets World. Drugs, gambling. Is that who we are not? They, they could have got one of the guys from Sons of Anarchy. Now, okay, so here's a great So example. then it would just be Sin Sons of Anarchy the movie. That would be great. So here's the deal. Think about this. Sons of Anarchy, okay? The main character is no. supposed to be an attractive guy. He's supposed to be the pretty boy out of the group, but he still has like a hardened edge to him. This fucking Austin Butler... He he's so like prettied up. Like I want to see Austin Butler ain't gonna be able to stop talking like a motorcycle. Says this guy. I agree. They're always a shot of Austin Butler making that face in every one of his trailers. People are already shitting on it. Um, Wait, he just says the face. He, it doesn't even make it say anything bad. That's a bad face. Um, everyone likes Tom Hardy, but. Wow, you didn't read that one? Wow, Tom Hardy and Austin Butler. I'm sold. And this guy doesn't know any better. Um, yeah, like, this is just... I'm so thrilled to see Austin to be in this. Nah, there's some girls writing that. They don't know any. What do girls know? Beautiful atmosphere. Nah. No, this is... This is... This looks... This is going to be a great movie. Yeah. What a cast. Uh, See, the rest, I'm of, seeing the rest of the cast Austin looks good. Austin Butler is getting everywhere nowadays. I, that's unfortunate. I don't like him. Tom Hardy and Austin Butler. Butler has me at Elvis, and the name Hardy speaks for itself. I'm psyched for the, oh, these people See? Don't know. They don't know what they're doing. You're just an internet troll. Uh, you know, look, the, the women are coming out. I just want to watch Austin Butler's biceps. See, that's what yeah. you're talking about. This, I can't wait to see his biceps a, either because his movie's going to be great. This is a woman's movie. This is you're a, a woman's this movie. This is a movie aimed at women. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. This is a this is a this is basically a gay film. No. I will not watch this. Not because I have anything against the gays, but just <laughs> because it's not, not a, made for me. It's made this, for gay men. This is and not a gay. <laughs> This is a gay biker movie. It no, is it so isn't. gay. It's not broke back biker. It's so gay. It doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be that overt, but putting Austin Butler in this makes it a gay film. No, it doesn't. I will not watch it. It's going to be good. I won't watch it. It's going to be good. I'll, I'm excited for The Last Ronin. I'm excited for the fucking Deadpool movie. And this. But No, I refuse. This. I refuse. And I think, And I think they're putting Twister back in theaters. Oh, God. Well, they had the sequel, Twisters. I don't know if that came out yet. Did that come out? I don't know. I just made that up. Twist. Let me see. Twisters. There was a movie that came out after Twister called The Night of the Twisters. Uh, July 19th. Yeah. See, Why don't you go see that? I, I would rather. I, and I, you know I hate Twister. You love Twister because you love it. Dusty and you love I Helen Hunt. Fucking Dude, hate you used that to film. have a picture of Helen Hunt in your room, no, a I, poster that what? you'd masturbate to what? all the time. No. Yes, you did. Not. I remember this. What? No. Yeah. She's, she was wearing jean shorts. She's too weird looking. And she had she's that just, beak. 
She's got like a she weird. She had that Helen Hunt beak. Her face is way and too. You're like, I want to, I want to climb on top of that Hunt. She's, she got such a plain face. No, dude, you were all about it. It's, it's too much of a plain face. There were so many cum stains on that fucking ah, poster. Absolutely not. I, that's not, not, no. And you had like James Paxton Look. or something, or Bill Paxton or whoever the fuck uh, was in that movie. No, so. Yeah, I mean that that movie's a miss, but I would rather see that than the gay biker film because that that movie's fucking the, that's the biker. It's gonna be awesome. No. Yeah. Um. I, I'm. I, what are, What are the What are the other big ones that are coming out this? Summer? I don't know. Um. Dunstan checks oh, in too. Well, you know what came out? I know we talked about the other day. There's the um, that Eminem song, that Houdini song. Yeah. Taking Abra, Abra, good Abra. And I'm gonna be honest with you, it's, it's growing on me. I'm hearing it everywhere. I'm it's not awesome. digging it. It's a good song. I'm not digging it. I, Dude, it's, why are you such a negative not, Nancy today? It's not bad. It's not his worst. So here's here's what I've been doing since we talked about this. I have every Eminem song ever going back from Infinite in chronological order. I'm, I'm, and I'm talking about any of his features. So I'm even talking about the songs he did for like Young Buck. Okay, or so they don't have like to that. be singles. No, no, no. It's just anything he's been in, and I did put it all in alpha, uh, uh, chronological order. So I got from Infinite, the Slim Shady EP. I got the, of course, and then there's two singles he actually put out that he was featured on before his LP came out, Green and Gold, and uh, he did a song with Bazaar called Trife Thieves. Uh, and then that, so it's, I went through in order all this stuff. I went into like, you know. Even the songs he did for, um, you know, Outsiders, uh, Missy Elliott, Bussa Rhyme, which is not that great of a song. He is the one with Jadakiss. Uh, yeah, I got that. That's later. This is chronological. So this is him and him and Redman from the uh, Nutty Professor 2 soundtrack. Um, but uh, I've gone and, you know, here's this, the 50 Cent songs, Royce to 5-9, the DMX Go to Sleep. Obi Trice features. Um, so I've, I've gone through, I'm all the way through everything, which is a lot. And I've gone through chronologically and I just ended with a uh, recovery. Yeah. So I'm going through everything and I'm going to be honest. The hardest, it was fun up until I get, I finished D 12 world. I was kind of, I was kind of vibing with everything and I haven't heard some of these songs in a long, long time. Um, it made me actually go back cause I listened to, cause he's on four of the Obi Trice yeah. songs. Uh, so I actually went back and even listened to cheers again. I haven't heard that in forever. You know, same any, uh, um, get rich or die trying. I haven't heard forever. I listened to that also on the side, but then I get into encore. Yep. Encore. Ah, 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 ah. So first of all, just lose it. Ah, ah, ah. I put Houdini is slightly better. Dude, okay, Houdini's way better. Slightly than that. better than that. You know what his best goofy single is, in my opinion? I think we talked about this last week, but With, I forget. Without me. Yeah. Without me. I think so. That's his best one. Uh, second, We Made You. No, We, we made, made You, you sucked. So, oh, are you including like uh, the real Slim Shady? Mm hmm. Or like My Name Is? Mm hmm. My name is, is probably the best one. No, it's too played out. I can't. I can't touch it. My name is is probably the best one. No, no, I don't think so. But anyway, so I get to encore, and I listen to it, and it's it starts off okay. I don't know when the last time you've heard this album, but I've always said it's 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 a big pile of shit. Everyone typically says it's not a With great encore. Album. Yeah, yeah. But as I went through it, I realized that. The album isn't – here's the problem with it is there's a lot of good ideas there, um, but then it's – he has puts on like a shitty chorus. Yeah. You know, like um, I want to say like Crazy in Love. The song I like that song. It's good. Chorus sucks. I, I hate what he does, the, the fucking – he's screaming on it and stuff, and it's just stupid. Um, Crazy on you? The heart? Yeah. Uh, but he does like, he, he does. screams on it? He's like yelling in his goofy voice. Yeah. Um, But I realized what made it really bad is he unwisely clumped a group of songs, some of the worst songs together, back to back to back. Yeah. It goes, because I was listening to it and I got to my first single and I was like, 
you know, this isn't that bad. My you know? first single was terrible. I I didn't think it was that bad. I thought it was okay. I think it I think it was better than Houdini. But that, anyway, so or like I, like big weenie. Okay, so that's what I'm getting to. That's a terrible. Once song. you get to the Paul skit on there, and you got Rain Man, Big Weenie, Just Lose It, and Ass Like That, I was ready to turn it off. And I was like, No, I have to finish hearing this album because I was doing housework. And I was like, No, 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 no. We're gonna. I gotta listen to the whole album. Then you get to spend some time, which has got Obi Trice on it. Not so bad. Mockingbird, meh. Okay. Sucks too. It's not amazing, but it works for what it is. It's not great. Crazy in Love is all right. One shot, two shot with D12. Actually, I like that. It's one of my favorite ones on here. And then, of course, Encore. So then there's a bunch of bonus, because I, I have all the deluxe of yeah. all the albums. So I have all the bonus songs he put out, too, um, if you get the exclusive stuff. And then I did a little research, did a little Wikipedia, and I found out that before the album came out, songs got leaked. Yeah, so that's, he, we talked about this last week yeah. or two weeks ago. So he one went. Of the last episodes. So he went last minute, worked with Dr. Dre, and he busted out a bunch of songs to make up for it. And mm. then they released those songs later as bonus songs. Yeah. So bonus songs are "We as Americans," "Love You More," "Ricky Tiki Talk," and uh, there was one other one I can't think of. Um, and I listened to that, and I was like, you know, if you replace Big Weenie. And fucking Rain Man and all that other dumb shit with those songs, this album probably wouldn't have been as bad as it was. It's not great. But I understand now why Eminem now says, I think you, you've you seen the clip too, where he actually refers to, he doesn't like uh, Encore, he doesn't like Relapse, but he likes Encore better. Yeah. And I understand why he likes Encore better because Encore has, there's promise in there, it's just the delivery is not there. Right. I like Relapse. Though. Relapse is I solid. Too. I like Relapse as well. That was the easiest part of going through all this was cuz then it gets gets a little rough too because he takes all that time off. So he's just nothing but features, you yeah. know. So you get Fack and Shake That and Mocking or not When I'm Gone, Gatman and Robin. He does the couple Trick Trick songs. Uh Gatman and Robin was off of what 50s second? Yeah, the massacre. I got hip hop with from the Bizarre album. That's that's good. A, that's a good song. That's a good. That's I actually good went song. back and was like, let me listen to the Handicap Circus, and then I was like, nah, I don't need to listen to that anymore. Yeah. Um, the uh, uh, the what is it? The re up. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. But there's. I was kind of getting. I was getting anxious to get up. There. Anyway, so I wanted to get to to relapse because that's when I got good. Then I got to. Recovery, and that's where I just finished. And now, actually, I left off at "I Need a Doctor," which came out like yeah. shortly after. And I actually didn't mind Recovery. There's a lot of features, but like, yeah. there's some good songs on there. I think it's not bad. It's just, it's too. I feel it's, it's, it's just a little too much. It's, it's, it needs a little diversity. It, it's, it's always, it's very like everything's got to be like hyper. Uh, emotional or like you're trying to like be positive like like uh, motivational you know what i mean like it's got to have like with the exception of maybe like two or three songs well i think like, too with that coming out i mean you had encore which sucked and in his eyes relapse which sucked yeah so like he i think he needed to like kind of like reinvent himself because that's like what um the the third one, the what's the third album? Oh, Eminem Show. Eminem Show. Yeah, it came out what like oh, three. So yeah. like that was like maybe seven years of either no music or bad music. So I think True. he needed to like. That's why he has all the features because he just I think he just picked the most popular artist pretty much at the time. Well, I think it is one of his most successful albums, and I found this out because I was looking up. Um, I was because I was putting everything in order, so I was doing a little research to. Uh, as far as chronologically. And then I wanted to understand, because if you remember, Dr. Drake came out with a couple songs randomly. Yeah. He had I Need a Doctor, and he had like that song Kush. Yeah. And uh, there was supposed to be a detox album, and he never did it. Yeah. They they leaked, and he was going to put them out, and then he was supposed to put out the album shortly thereafter, and he mm-hmm. just never delivered. But um, apparently, I Need a Doctor is the second highest selling Dr. Dre song of all time. Really? Yeah. Behind I, Still Dre, maybe? 
Nothing but a G thing? It might be that or next episode. I forget. It was one of those. Um, let's see. I'm going to look it up right now because I just looked it up. I need a doctor. Um, and it is a single by Dr. Dre. Uh, it is a background. Da, da, da. Uh, it is sold over 200. It also peaked making it Dre's second highest peaking song on the chart ever, of the Hot 100. It peaked at number four in the U.S. So it was the second highest. So I don't know what the first, it doesn't tell me. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, as a single, it went double platinum as a single in 2011, which nobody bought anything in 2011. Right. That's crazy. I didn't really care for that song. Um, honestly, I when I was listening to it, because it, it, it comes on it, in, in, uh, chronology right after encore ends. Yeah, and I was like, God, it just sounds like did this song was this supposed to be on or not encore? I'm sorry, uh, recovery. Yeah, was this supposed to be on recovery or was this actually a Dr. Dre song? Because honestly, it's got two Eminem verses on yeah. it. Yeah, is Fifty on that too or no? No, no, no. It's just Eminem, and then so I that's why I had to look it up. And apparently, it was written for Dr. Dre, and uh, they were gonna put Lady Gaga was supposed to be on the hook. But they were like, no, just have Skylar Gray do it. Um, but I thought that was interesting. And then, yeah, he never, Dr. Dre never put out that album. And then he put out Compton. Yeah. Which kind of came and went. Right. Uh, and that's, he. and apparently that's his last one. He'll never do it again. Yeah. He's a billionaire. He doesn't need to. He's supposed to be um, producing Snoop Dogg's next album. It's going to be called Missionary. It's supposed Doggy to come out style. this year. Missionary. Yeah. 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 It's gonna be on. It might be on. It should be on death row. It's weird. Yeah, I probably good. won't listen to it. I'll check Sno- it out. Snoop doesn't. I, I don't know. Snoop has never really done it for me, except for Doggy Style. You know, here's my complaint about that. So I recently, I've been listening to a lot of music mm-hmm. because I haven't been on social media or playing video games or anything like that. Um, I listened to, um, The Chronic, and then Info, which is a solid, yeah. solid album all the way through. Easy listen. And then I went and listened to Doggy Style because I've never really – I've skipped around it, mm-hmm. I've, you know. And it's okay. My big complaint is every fucking song – There's an a, intro? Yes. Yep. I'm like, I will never mix any – these. none of these songs are that amazing. They're either so overplayed that I don't want to listen to yeah. it out of other than nostalgia mm-hmm. like Gin and Juice or – it's not that great enough for I'm going to go back and sit through a minute and a half yeah. of some bullshit. Like, I don't know why they I remember did listening that. to that CD a lot, and I was like, like especially the first couple times, I was like, is this, so is this a song? Or, because there's skits in there too, so it's yeah. like, yeah. It's just it's too a, much. A annoying. They did the same thing on uh, Biggie's album, Life After Death. Yeah. Like, some of the best songs, like, Kick in the Door has got, like, the Mad Rapper skit in the right. beginning. I'm like, why? Why yeah. do I have to sit through this every fucking time? And I have to just fast forward for yeah. a minute and a half. Or there's the one that's, is it Sky's the Limit? Missing You. Missing You. Does, it has that, too. I oh, love Missing You. Oh, my baby. I remember uh, fucking the mom talking about her son or some shit. You ain't getting into nothing but trouble. You get into nothing but trouble. <laughs> I don't forget. I don't remember what so else she said. Stupid. Says. And then like uh, <laughs> Snoop's got the. I think it's on Snoop's got the twenty sack pyramid, or is that Dre's? That's the chronic. That's yeah. the chronic. Yeah. That, but that's got its own little track. It's sub- see on the chronic they don't do that. You're right. It's always after or it's mm-hmm. its own thing. So I think Snoop Dogg was done a disservice uh, on that one. But he. That's the only like. That's the only good or decent to good album he has. Like the dog yeah. father was garbage. The uh, last meal was garbage. Mm-hmm. It just he has like one or two songs on it. And well, he's this, better as a feature. Yes, absolutely. He's got some really great features. He's just not a very strong independent. Oh, that's why he uh, came out recently, and he was like, "That was that's the reason why I never had Eminem on a track is because yeah. he's like he just like he'll renegade you and." I think, and I never realized like like I know Nas said like you know Eminem killed Jay Z on his own shit like I like I actually listened to that song like within the last week and like it's good mm-hmm. and Eminem kills it but like I don't necessarily think Jay Z got killed on it like I don't I don't understand that 
I, angle, but I think as far as it, it was at a time where so I also coincidentally went down a Jay Z rabbit hole mm-hmm. uh, over the like, last week. Like I said, I listened to a lot of music um, and burning CDs, and well, more so burning the songs off the CD and uploading it to the cloud. But um, and he going through this phase where he was putting out an album a year, right? And there's a lot of crap in there, and he's it's very generic sounding. He's got good songs along the way, yeah. But like, think of like Life and Times Volume Two. He's mm-hmm. got some good songs, but I mean, Cash Money Hose. I like it for nostalgia, but it's not good. Right. It, it's that you know, there's there's a lot of bullshit in there, and I think it Eminem. By the time Blueprint, it's, I don't like the first Blueprint. It's got good songs on it, mm-hmm. but I like the second Blueprint better. Yeah. I liked all three blueprints. The third one, actually, I think is my favorite. Yeah. yeah. But um, the for the first one, Eminem is such just like a breath of fresh air. Mm-hmm. Like it's such a like a change of pace for everything else that you're listening to. That of course, like it's gonna sound amazing. And uh, Eminem produced that song, so it's already made for him. Right. Like it, everything's stacked where he's gonna sound the best. Mm-hmm. It just it's just the way it's gonna be. Um. But there's like other, like Little Wayne talks about it. Uh, I seen a clip recently where he was saying how like, you know, it was one of these interviews where they're trying to like go to a little bit of yeah. shit talking. But he was like, because they're like, oh, do you feel that Eminem? Because he did this. Eminem did a song on his album mm-hmm. that dropped the world on him, I think. And uh, and he was like, no, 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 he didn't. He didn't kill me on that. But he's like, I had to rewrite it like three times. Yeah. To you know, to make sure that it was good. Mm-hmm. And I still think Eminem was better on right. that. Right. Um and then there was the one did you ever hear the one that uh with Eminem and Buster Rhymes came out probably five years ago? Probably not. Calm down. It's like samples um the jump around okay. beat a uh, so portion of it. And there's different versions of it, but there's like a like a seven minute long version. And it's because apparently and Buster Rhymes tells a story where he, he does, he writes his whatever, two verses, and he sends it off to mm-hmm. Eminem to do a verse. And then Eminem comes back with like double the amount of bars that Buster Rhymes has. <laughs> and he's like, well, I can't have that. So right. I'm going to write more and then I'm going to send it back off to make sure he knows and he gets it. Now there's more on there. And so they just keep going back and forth. And he said it got to like 20 minutes long at Jesus. one point. And he's like, what what are we doing? Like, what are we, we gotta stop this at some point. We gotta trim I this do, down. I could go back to doing the Ja Rule voice if you need. Yeah. So. What would I be without you? <laughs> you know, Buster did all those, right? Like, no. With, yeah, that's Buster doing all that. Oh, on all the uh, uh, the diss uh, songs. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, I didn't like know. That. It, like they had the uh, who was a DJ Green Lantern mm-hmm. the mixtapes and yeah, like when they would do the Ja Rule skits, it was always Buster. <laughs> <laughs> Who would I be without you, I never my baby? That. I know. I, re- I didn't know that. I remember he he was like on because there was like a hail mary. They did a version, basically as a Ja Rule disc, yeah. but it was with the hail mary beat from Tupac, and he was on one of the intros on that. Yeah, and I was like, oh man, I didn't and know Buster Rhymes was getting in. Yeah, on this. he does. He does at the end. <laughs> um, like I think it's that song too. It, it's either that or they. I think they do an um, not me against the world, but uh, all, against all odds. I think they mm. took that song too, of Tupac's, and they made it a Ja Rule disc. At the end of one of those songs, Buster Rhymes is like basically he was like, you know, leave my name out your mouth, like whatever. I don't. I think, and he's like, that's all I'm gonna say, pretty much. And mm-hmm. then. Uh, when it's like fading out, and you, they're like, la- you can hear him laughing, and he's like, "What would I be?" <laughs> <laughs> ja Rule was not all that great. I remember, I dude Drake is just a better version of Ja Rule. He kind of is. Like he, if you think yeah. about it, like he just he does the hooks, yeah, he does like yeah. the R and B like uh, collabs and shit. And he's just been smart enough up until recently to keep his mouth shut. Right. Generally. Like, he well, doesn't... little Wayne came. I saw this uh, quote from little Wayne today. that um, he, uh, the reason he signed Drake is because he was like, he wasn't hard. Like he's like, he, mm. he just could rap and write. And he's like, you know, he could rap about like a bowl of cereal or like, you know, waking up, you know, at noon or something. And like, 
I guess um, he heard him on a hook, and he's like, who's that singing? He's like, that's the same guy. And he's like, okay, we got to get him because he can sing hooks. Mm. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, there was, um, it was, so speaking of which, one of the other rabbit holes I went down, not super long because I'm not a big Tupac fan, but I started digging into Tupac. Yeah. And I was going through, because I was like, how many albums, because I know certain songs, but I don't know what albums they come yeah. from. So I started looking them up. And, bro, this guy, it is insane the amount of songs this guy has. Oh, I know. It is. So, I okay. So let me look up. Uh, let me just sh- show you here how crazy. Th- so I, I was going through, like, Wikipedia because I was looking up these other things for Dr. Dre while yeah. I was waiting for these uh, uploads to happen. And uh, where's his, uh, where's where's his, like, discography right, or whatever? Right I want like the whole list. Right, you can click right there, probably. Is that it? Okay, yeah, here, here. So, um, yeah. So he's got Tupacalypse now. He's got Strictly for My N Words. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then he goes to Me Against the World. I think he's That's on his best album. Yeah. There's this one. Uh, is this one a double album? No. No, it's a single. And this, this was prior to Death Row. Okay. Yeah, he's on Interscope, but yeah, he's not on Death Row yet. Uh, and then All Eyes on Me, which technically came out after he died. Yeah, I think so. But this was a double album. And it's 132 minutes. I looked at this. I was like, and I recognize some of these songs. But I was like, damn, he could put out a double album. And it's. Because he did back to back double albums. Well, that's the other thing. So he does that, then dies. And then there's um, the. He also already finished. The Don Caluminati Seven Day Theory. Yeah. Um. So I was reading about that, and apparently this was already done. Um. But all he, what he was gonna do is, is they fucked it up. It says it in here somewhere where he was supposed to call himself, uh, Caluminati, and not not Machiavelli or something like mm-hmm. that. I forget what it's. And I'm gonna I'm gonna someone. There's gonna be a Tupac fan listening to this and be like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Um, but they, yeah, he was supposed, that was supposed to be like his, um, like a character that he was going to do. And, um, and so that, that comes out and he's, and then did you hear about the, um, the alternate cover for this? Okay. So there's a seven day theory. Check this out. Um, I think might've been on the back, uh, alternate, uh, cover. Obviously, they changed it Mm -hmm. because of the people that were all involved. But was it the back? Maybe it's back cover. Yeah, it's the yeah, it's the back cover. Hold on a second. Alternate back cover. Um, it's got basically it's a picture. Oh, here it is. Of course, it's like a tiny picture. We get a bigger one. Here we go. So original cover for Machiavelli resurfaces and it's a bunch of, it's like a bunch of disses. Yeah. So here's, you know, notorious PIG with a bad girl shirt. It's biggie, but with a pig face. Yeah. Diddy in a dress. Um, I don't know who this guy is. That's being fucked by a white woman. Or black or white man? I don't know what's going on here. Yeah. Um, I don't know what that's going on. Oh, what happened in there? Yeah, so, but this is, this was the original, and they decided, like, eh, maybe that's not, since yeah. one of these people are dead. Right. <laughs> you should probably not do that. Um, This is the only album Tupac released in late 90s with a funny back cover. Or wait, no, was it under... No, no, it was in the back. The album was supposed to be a mixtape. In an interview, the guy said, who did the artwork pretty good. Hmm. And yeah, I know it was already done. That's a good album, too. Yeah. The Machiavelli one. Yeah, that's what I heard. So anyway, I, we got way off track from what I was wanting to do uh, a cover on this one. So, so he does this, and they release it quick because, you know, All Eyes on Me came out in February... He dies somewhere in between, and they pump this out by the end of the year. Why not? 
I can definitely see that. That's a Suge Knight yeah. move. He's like, no, 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 you can't wait a year. You got to push this out by the holiday season. Yeah. And it does well. Then, but they put out, like, a year later, next November, another fucking two discs. Yep. Are you still down? Remember me. And they just pump out all these other songs. Okay, fine. They do that in 97. At this point, Dre had already left. Right. right? I think he's got, he's at Inter- uh, Aftermath doing his thing. Um, and then they put out a greatest hits. Interscope puts out a greatest hits, uh, in relation, in conjunction with, I guess his mom or his estate. Um, they do that. And then it goes on from there. 99, they put out an album with the outlaws. Yeah. Apparently this one doesn't do very well. I still rise. That's a double disc too. Yeah. 72 minutes. <laughs> then he, then 2001, I didn't even know about this until the end of time. This is another two hours. Oh, yeah, the, the, until the end of time is a d- double disc. That's the one I thought you had up. Oh, well, the other one's still pretty long. Which it's, one's the other one? St- still I Rise. Oh, yeah, that's what the Outlaws, that's not a good one. Oh, okay. So They have, they have one good song on there. And... So Until the End of Time is a, another double disc album. Mm-hmm. There's 30 songs on this goddamn thing. I have that one. I, I had most of those. And then, an, then a year later, Better Days. Another double album. Yep. One year later, they're pumping this guy 30 songs. Cl- How many fucking songs they, does this guy have? They, they, at one point, um, it was like I read somewhere when we were like in high school, when we were in like 2005. Yeah. They said that he would he could have music come out like every year until we were like 45. I believe it. Because... I was and I was sitting alone upstairs in my office looking at this, and I'm literally yelling at like, "There's not another one." How many? He's got yeah. more albums, more songs have been released since he's dead, yeah, than when he was alive. Right now, I don't know the quality of all these. I don't know if you if you've heard any of these. No, I, I've uh, I've had I like, had uh, most of these albums. Um, were they any good? Th- until then, the time was had some good songs on there. Um, I think they had the one with Bone Thugs. Um. Uh, that breathing song is good. Okay. Um. I mean, Ballad of a Dead Soldier is good. Okay. Like if they were to remake, um, a greatest hits, that might be those two songs might be on there. Um. Okay. Yeah. Casey and Joe. Oh, Bone. Th- or is that? Yeah. yeah. Thug. Thugging. Th- yeah. Thugging. Okay. Um. Yeah. I mean, this is. This. I mean. So this is this is still death row. I I want to say. Yeah, I think all of his stuff. Well, after the first three albums. So yeah, and the, well, then it changes though. For better days, it gets changed to the row. So I had to look that up, which is still death row. Yeah, but that's it's like repackaged. Yeah, they're they're having some some troubles, and then Tupac Resurrection. That was, was for the movie, which came out a year after. No death row at that point. Yeah, and then Eminem produced this. And then there's a live album was like, I think the last death row. So then, cause so I was, as I'm looking at all this, I'm like, okay, Suge Knight, all he did was release up until loyal to the game. Cause at this point, you know, they, they started cutting yeah. death row out of it. Um, but then even then death row was still pushing out live out. They, anything with that he had recorded, right. they sold it. Oh yeah. They just made sure to, and then, so I look at death row I was like, who do they have going up into the 2000s? They didn't have nobody. Right. They didn't have nobody. I was like, this is, this is wild. Yeah. That is insane that this guy was just, and even like the live albums are like two hours long. That's why like, that's why there's so many that love like the theories of him like being alive because he recorded so much fucking shit. Yeah. While he was alive that they're like, there's no way that he could have recorded all this in that little amount of time. Uh, unless, unless he was just, I don't know. He, well, so apparently, uh, I was reading about the, the Machiavelli album mm-hmm. and they had, I guess like another studio, but they were just like B player producers yeah. that were just like, whatever they just do, like the pop song. Right. Or whatever. And, um, I think they call it like the wax studio because nothing, nothing, nothing out of there comes out of there. It's very good. I read a whole article mm-hmm. on this thing, 
And uh, he was just busy making music and no one else was available. So he's like, just give me them. Right. Bring them and, in. And um, he, he had a beef with Dre at that point, too. Yeah. So, because, uh, like, there's lines in the Machiavelli album saying, like, you know, gay-ass Dre and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, that's wild. Like, he was just working nonstop on that. But I also think we all, I mean, people pretty much have come to the conclusion that he was probably gay. Yeah. Like a lot, there's a lot of things that point to it. And especially if you go look at that old interview that he did, Right. some people I've, I've been in arguments with people about this where they're like, well, nobody was young. And you know, he was just like, like, no, 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 no. You look at his hand. You look at the yeah, way that he mannerisms. holds himself. Like, let's see. Uh, his mannerisms. Young Tupac interview, 17 years old. I mean, like, I know he's not going to be all hardened and stuff. But I've seen guys speak to women with this much respect. Like, listen to his, like, even his voice. He, he's a little bit of a gay voice. I want to be honest. Mother just told I grew up. My mother raised me. So I have this much respect for women. And I, and we, I fight often because of that. And it gives me a lot of friends. I mean, I, I get a lot of friends, because, but I also... I get a lot of friends because I have respect for women, ultra respect for women. Like, but then, like, I, I, was, I was liking this girl in, in Tam, and, um, and I'm extra nice, you know, extra gentle. He's extra, extra, right? Dude, like, oh, you're beautiful, and you deserve the best. And she told me I was too nice. Like, just in the way that he yeah. would talk, he's just, like, so, it's very effeminate. Right. And then, yeah, between that and the way he would wear a bandana was the same way, like, a a woman would wear it. <laughs> She's cleaning ring. the house. Yeah, like I would be. I, so I was, as I was looking through all this, I'd be like, I wonder if he was gay. Suge Knight would have definitely found out about it, and yeah. if he knew about that, <clears throat> oh yeah, he would fucking. He might fuck him. Well, he might do that. He might throw him in a corner with yeah. a dog or something, like he did to that one guy yeah. in the movie, or inject him with AIDS, or he could have done that. Um, but. Yeah, I could see him just being like, just working them, yeah. like grinding them out to a nub. Like, you know, you got to keep making music. Right. Well, like, there was also, gotta, I don't know where I saw it or read it, but um, apparently he didn't like being on death row either. I um, believe it. And um, he signed like a three album deal and he was like, okay, he's like, wait a second. If I get this, it, like after he saw how like death row operated. Yeah. He was like, w you're telling me once I get my three albums done, I, I'm released? Yeah. And so he punched those three albums out. Which, uh, honestly... Super quick, so he could... If you look at it, he created the double double album, which is enough where he could have done two albums in one, which I'm sure there was probably some like pushback there to be like, no, no, just put a double album out. Right. And then there was... Then he had Machiavelli after that, and mm -hmm. the one... What was the first one he did in Death Row? It was before um, All Eyes on It me, was... Right? Hold on, I fucked up. It the, might have been me against the world. Um, let's go back. It was that's Outlaws. That's the greatest hits. That's Machiavelli. Eyes of me. Yeah, me against the world. Uh, well, yep. that's only Interscope though. Okay, never mind. So it's um, it's that one. All eyes on me. Yeah. It's uh, Machiavelli. Yeah. And it. Um, is are you still down? Okay, yeah. So he probably was already pumping this out, and then you know what's oh, wait, that's the interscope too. Yeah, this is and this is Jive Interscope Jive. Interesting. The album was the first to be released from Tupac's mother's imprint, Amaru Entertainment. Features mostly all previously unreleased material, all which was recorded between ninety two and ninety four. So that was before Death Row. Okay, so this was so he was already pumping out songs before that, and then the greatest hits came out. A year later, and then still rise, and then 2001. So, so Death Row really didn't put out anything new from him until 2001, but they had a lot, yeah, to work with. But either way, so if he's pumping out these songs, he probably only had one more in the chain. Well, he already had the songs right. done, he had enough, he could have been done. And it's like, oh, okay, well, we got all that, so yep. just shoot him, kill him, <laughs> just shoot him, just you know, pop out. Shoot him up. Um, you know what we didn't get into yet, though. Speaking of uh, beefs, yeah. speaking of uh, blood beefs, yeah. 
CM Punk. CM Punk. He's, he's got a beef with Drew McIntyre. Nope. Well, he does. Well, he's but. also got a beef with Violent J. Oh, God. Of the Insane Clown Posse. He had posted this. Now, just to catch you up on this, uh, JCW is back in a big, big way right okay. now. Okay. There's actually, uh, I think it's, is it this Saturday? Do they need any wrestlers? We know a lot. They're going. There's a show at Harpo's, I think, coming up here. Uh, maybe it already happened. I don't know. But I think there was, at least there was, what, Lunacy. JCW TV taping Harpo's June 22nd. So that is coming up. That's this Saturday. So it's the time of recording this. So they're they're coming back. All right. He just went down to Triple Mania. Okay. Down in uh, Mexico. He's, he's actually he actually did um as we're speaking today he did a live show mm-hmm. with Conrad. Oh really, yeah. Conrad? So so he's getting back into the wrestling scene yeah. there. I've been kind of seeing this online for a for a minute. Um, but then I saw this post. So he posts this, and he's so mad. Not only did he post the text on Instagram from a note app, but he also copy and pasted it into the caption of the thing. Okay. So this is this says, um, "Fuck CM Punk for life. You wouldn't shake our hands in TNA, little bitch, and you clown on the only real friend you ever had in Colt Cabana, you bitch." I shared my bank account with my mom before she passed. You insensitive, you little insensitive bitch. You little heartless alien. Suck my dick, you little weak bitch. Couldn't beat a jobber in UFC, you fucking nearly pathetic little joke. Come beat me up, bitch. You suffer inside of everyone, and they mama knows that. Get your head right, you little suffering-ass bitch. VJ of Insane Clown Posse, just as legendary as you, little bitch. Face it. All right. So I was going to ask you, because you're more tapped into wrestling, uh, what's that about? I have no idea. <laughs> okay. No clue. Apparently, this goes back to TNA. Yeah, which is I didn't know CM Punk had anything to do with TNA. Yeah. So I don't know. I have no clue. <laughs> and Cole Cabana's in the mix. Well, Cole Cabana and CM Punk don't like each other anymore. Well, I know that. I okay. So I do know that Val J is is friends with Cole Cabana. Yeah. So it's so probably has something to do with that. Okay. So that that may make more sense then. But. Um, yeah, I have no idea. All I know is he's beefing with Drew McIntyre, and Drew McIntyre quit. Quit. Oh, oh, like a work. Yeah, he, oh. I thought he was just like, no, nah, I can't do this. No, thing. he was like, you know, like he was in the middle of the ring, like about to give a promo. He's like, you know what? Screw this company. I quit. And he just walked off. Wow. And they showed him with like Triple H and, and, um, I was about to say Howie Mandel, but, um, um, <laughs> Adam know. Pierce. And, uh, they were begging him to stay. Okay, wait a minute. So I just looked at this. I'm scrolling through the comments. It looks like somebody on Instagram, Star Drowner, has a little bit of an explanation okay. of what this is about. Because I don't know. I read this, and I tried uh, to read I, the comments originally. And I was like, I don't know. I Nobody know. knows. I have no idea. So he goes, for anyone having trouble either understanding what Jay said, following it, or understanding what could have happened in general, here's what seems to have happened. Based on what I do know and what Jay said here – if you're not aware, WWE and TNA have been doing some cross-promotional yeah, stuff they recently. Have. Okay, so that makes sense. Oh. That makes sense. Most notably, Jordan Grace appearing at a NXT show and then having a match with Roxanne Perez. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing Punk went to a TNA show and Jay did too. Jay tried to say, what's up, shake his hand, something that damn near every wrestler does and every wrestler should do when they first enter a building, and they do, and they do it very gingerly. Yes. They do. A, I've shaken wrestlers' hands before, and they always give you a limp, fi- like, fish handshake. And I give them a nice tight grip as a man should, and I found out that you don't want to do that because it means that you're going to be tough to work with. Yeah. That's why you got to give the limp right. shake. Um, the more you know. Yep. So yeah, if you ever meet a wrestler, don't give him a fir- just give him a nice little dainty or a fist bump. Fish fist bumps are good too. Um, so most uh, where were we? I'm guessing Punk went to a TNA show. So did Jay. Jay tried to say what's up, shake his hand, something that every wrestler does and every wrestler should do when they first enter the building. I'm guessing Punk snubbed Jay and acted like Jay was beneath him. Extremely disrespectful and disappointing to hear about. Not surprising either. Hope that changes. If you want to know more about the beef between Punk and Colt Cabana, there's plenty of videos out there explaining. Strongly suggest searching the Wrestle Talk episodes that cover it, as they have a lot of insight. Uh, 
I, he can, and then he kind of falls apart because he goes two J M M F L W C L. You deserve better, Duke. Okay. Well, that, there we go. Got a yeah. little insight there. I mean, it's speculation, but it's you know, it's, it leaves me with something because I'm yeah. like, what was that about? Yeah. Maybe I, I, I did forget that they started doing uh, cross promotion. I forgot they started calling it TNA again. So. Oh. Because it was an impact for a while, so it kind of threw me off when you were like it, back in the TNA, and I was like thinking years ago, but yeah, they're still around, and but, they're doing they are doing crossover shit. But what if this is actually a TNA work? What if this is leading up to a violent JC and Punk match on TNA? Could be how the, how cra- crazy and great would that be? I guess it would be crazy and great. You'd love it. I wouldn't see it. Why not? Because TNA's not on TV anywhere. Well, how are they doing it? I don't know. I don't fucking... <laughs> I don't pay attention to TNA. Well, they, you'll get back into it. Maybe. <laughs> you can always get back in. You can always jump back in the pool. <laughs> well, speaking of... Uh, also, speaking of beefs going on, another beef is brewing. Yes. I don't know if you know about this. There's two gentlemen, older gentlemen, uh, one by the name of... Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Well, no, I don't know where he, that guy's at. Oh, okay. He's still. I wish he was involved. This, you know, how great that would be if he He'd was be involved. Shitting on people's heads. No, it'd be great. Um, like, I'm going to <laughs> Iraq and I'm gonna <laughs> shit on her head. <laughs> so, uh, no, it's these two other guys, uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Uh, they are. I, so I just one's a felon or something. Yeah, that's fine. You know, we all have a past. No. Yeah. Oh, it pass. Dude, yeah, okay, man. so <laughs> they were talking about um, Hunter Biden. Yeah. Like how, like... He's he, in court, too. Yeah, he was, like, doing drugs and shit yeah. like that. Well, like, you know, obviously I've heard the name Hunter Biden, and I just don't pay attention enough to the news to, like, see what he looks like and shit. Yeah. And, you know, Joe Biden's a fucking older than dirt. Yeah. But, like, when they're saying, like, you know, he got caught with drugs or stuff, like, like I'm thinking, like, a 17-year-old kid... <laughs> No, this dude's like in his sixties. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> the videos of it, I mean, dude. He's got videos of it. He filmed it. He even had a Pornhub account. He didn't upload, yeah. but apparently he had a Pornhub account. I read this somewhere. And then he took his laptop in to get it fixed. Right. He just and he did, and here's the thing, the the place didn't like rat him out. He just never came to pick it up. He just never came to pick it up, and then someone found out about it, and someone was like, "Well, after so long, I, right. I think you can buy it or something." Right. So, but yeah, yeah like I'm thinking, like it's <laughs> like a 17 year old kid, like getting in like mischief, and it's like a fucking like old man, yeah. dude. Do you know how crazy that guy is? So this is the other thing I read. I don't know how accurate this is, but I'm just going off of what I've heard. But so he's got he's doing crack, he's doing all kinds of crazy shit. His brother dies. So there's a Joe, Joe Biden had another yeah. son. He died. A couple years ago, right? I, not before that. This was. I think it was like pre-COVID, like right before COVID, right? No, it was before that even, I think. Oh. Um, and he, it was when, no, because he was when he was still vice president. I remember hearing about this for, for Obama. And uh, his son died in, he, he's, he was in the military. He died. I think he died in the military. Um, and so then uh, Hunter Biden yeah. was doing drugs after that. Then Hunter Biden divorces his wife and starts cheating on it. Well, doesn't divorce right away, but starts cheating on his wife with his brother's wife. <laughs> and He's I dead? think, yes. And. I think he married her. I don't know 100%. That's I may weird. be wrong, but I think that they may have even married. We know some brothers like that. I know. And that's why it stood out to me. I was like, wow, I guess that's not as uncommon as you'd think. So, uh, but then, yeah, then he's doing crack. He's doing all this crazy stuff. And then he would do art. And that's how he made money, is he would sell art. All right. For, like, millions. People, why can't, dude, why can't I just like put something on a canvas? Well, because it's money laundering. That's really what it is. They, they, just, they, they buy his art and then maybe get to meet his father. That's what they would do. Well, why that's, doesn't anyone want to meet my father? I don't know. Maybe because maybe your dad's not the president. That's why, like, <laughs> that's, okay, that's why Cody Rhodes' story was so fucking stupid because he his whole story was he wanted to get the title that his dad never got. 
And I'm like, my dad never got a title. That's true. It's the same fucking story, Cody. No but, one cares. Everyone to, wants to acknowledge a tribal chief, and he, he's gone because of you. He had to finish his story. That's the why. story should have been him fucking like, like dying. I don't know. Well, in one the day. ring. Well, speaking of dying in the ring, so you got these two elder statesmen are going to be debating next next week. That's next week. Yeah. Uh, 27th, and this is probably the only one that they're going to get because apparently it wasn't going to happen, and then they had to get, uh, they had to go back and forth to set up the match yeah. and have to have all these concessions. Ding, ding. So this is the concessions, okay? Now, I'm getting this from USA Today, which I think is generally, I don't know if it's fake news or not. I don't think it's fake news, but I don't know. I don't keep up to date. So here's just a little snippet of what it's going to look like. Um, so President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump will face off for their first debate in the 2024 election cycle later this month. CNN, the host of the June 27th debate in Atlanta, recently released additional rules. So these are the rules. All right. So I'm looking at these rules. So I'm reading these rules. I heard about the rules about the Jake Paul, Mike Tyson, which yeah. got delayed. Yep. Mike Tyson had a health scare. Yeah. But I think they set it for November or something. Yes, like that. they did. So, um, so they're back on. And now they have, which, you know what I wonder, though? I wonder if he didn't have a health scare and they had it set at the same time as this debate. No, they. Oh. so it was supposed to be. That would have been be, funny if it would have been. Though. I think it was supposed to be June 15th. So it's supposed to be this past weekend. Oh, man. And um, Tyson, like, they thought he was going to die on an airplane. Oh, okay. Well, then never mind. I just thought they didn't want to go up against these. Oh, no, yeah. No, they. <laughs> It was a like, what if it, what if they get bigger ratings than the Mike Tyson, Jake Paul thing? They like, probably will. <laughs> they w- yeah. Dude, I can't believe there's two, like, 85-year-old men, like, fighting for presidency and there's nobody else younger. So. We I, need Shri Tandadar. Well, I think after this. We'll, we'll get Shri. We're getting a nice reboot. We'll get a nice reboot Yeah, because both of them are going to be dead in four years. Yeah, 2028 reboot. The Rock. The Rock Not versus Austin. Maybe. So, um. Let's see. So here's the rules. There's additional rules. Both candidates' microphones will be muted until it is their turn to speak. That's dumb. I know. And they won't be allowed to interact with campaign <clears throat> excuse me. Campaign staff during the two commercial breaks. Okay, so it's so they can't if you gotta get cut or something, they can't do it. They gotta get some water. That's nothing we'll see. <laughs> anyway, so Trump and Biden skirted the commission of presidential debates and opted for earlier debates this year. The second debate is scheduled for September 10th, hosted by ABC. Here's everything you need to know about watching the first presidential debate. Uh, the Iowa poll. Uh, Trump maintains a big lead over Biden and RFK Jr. despite felony convictions. I hear black people love him now. Yeah. He's selling his shirt. Yeah. His mug shirt. He's, he's got fucking those shoes. Those gold those shoes. shoes. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um... And that's it. This is just how to, how to watch it. That's all they got. So that's coming up next week. So I wonder if there'll be a fly on anyone's head this year. <laughs> was that? That wasn't that was Trump. Pence. Oh, that was, yeah. Which, by the way, Trump never said who his vice president is yet. It's going to be McMahon. Bro, how? What if it is Vince? And that's why he hasn't announced it yet. Because he's, he's going to just get the, he wants to get the heat behind him where it doesn't even matter. And then all of a sudden he drops the bomb that it's Vince. And it's like, no chance. Bro, That's what you got. How dope no would that No chance be? in hell. He's got my vote for Vince. I don't even care. And then like Vince's accuser and like Stormy Daniels team up for something. And it's <laughs> like. Do a, a broader panties Yeah, match. it's a WrestleMania. Like, that's how he does match. law. He does matches. He's like, no, you can't sue me. But bro, you can fight it out in the ring. Yeah. You got to. <laughs> Oh, someone on a, on a pole. Yeah, Judy Bagwell. They'll dig her up. They'll put her. <laughs> They'll be like, whoever can get Judy Bagwell <laughs> down from there <laughs> will be deciding Congress this yeah. year. <laughs> oh man, that's what that would be great. Is he, he does an announcement, dude, on this debate, and he's like, "Oh, I just also want to introduce my vice president," and then. He just struts out yep. there. He doesn't have the cane anymore. He's actually rehabbed. He's all Dude, good to go. He, like, I watched Deadpool today. What if they Deadpool him and, like, keep putting him in those, like, ISO chambers and shit? And that's why he's looking so sickly right now. Oh, maybe. And they're trying to just preserve him for forever. <laughs> so he can be president. Yeah. Because then if, if Trump wins 
and he becomes vice president, and Trump can't win again. So then he gets yeah. to run. And now we got President Vince. Yeah. How cool would President... I don't even care what party he's in. You just get President Vince. Vin, Vince goes into the, like the U.S. Hall of Fame, if there's one. Well, that's just... That's just history. I mean, that's a history book. No, that's they, all it is. They don't have Hall of Fames no. for that? No. Oh, it's just... By the way... It's a history book. By the way, Buffalo, Kentucky. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln's hometown. I didn't know that. Yeah. And I made a joke about, like, I was like, I wonder if blacks eat free. (laughs) (laughs) Well, because he did free him. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. yeah, You know. Yeah. This is a funny joke. (laughs) In Buffalo, they can eat anywhere for free? (laughs) Yeah, they should be able to. On Juneteenth, they should. Yeah. It should be Juneteenth uh, in a couple minutes. It should be a month, by the way. We talked about that. Yeah, we did. Um. So yeah, we have that. Speaking actually, that that butts into, into this video that just popped up randomly from this guy. Who's that guy? I don't know. He looks like a weird. He looks like a mix between like Jack Black, Mick Foley. I don't like his face <laughs> that big. I don't like. It. Look at his eyes. His he name kind of looks like the guy from. Um, remember the show um, Fact or Fiction? <laughs> the guy you know from who I'm Star talking Trek? about. The Star Trek guy? Yeah, yeah, that guy. He looks like a fatter version. Yeah. yeah. His name is Tizzy Tizzy Ent. Tizzy Entertainment. Tizzy Entertainment. Why well, he's got like six hundred thousand followers? This guy's big. Um so a ama- so this is we were looking on Twitter before the show here, and it just popped up the news headline that says Macy's manager fired uh actors in viral elevator video i don't know that no. so so he's gonna tell us about it <laughs> if you guys could see this this is because it's a vertical video and this monitor is a 32 inch monitor vertical his, yeah his face is huge <laughs> it's in full screen it's making me uncomfortable it's like <laughs> it's he's here so big it's so unnecessary <laughs> This is actually, and I don't like it. And his eyes are bugging out right yeah, now because he's going to tell us what something is crazy. Going on? All right, let's, uh, is this muted still? Hold on. No, it's not. Is, uh, here, let's uh, play this. Let's find the story from Tizzy Ent. <clears throat> Macy's department store. This young lady worked for Macy's. Came into work. She's about four hours late because of a family emergency. Okay. Why she's didn't in she the tall? elevator because this one True. has a bunch of floors. And one of her managers gets in the elevator and decides... With an elevator full of customers to have a conversation with her about her being late. Okay, so she's four hours late because of a family emergency. She shows up, elevator full of customers, manager's there, and I'm assuming fires her. Yeah, you're four hours late. That's not really. Yeah, but I let you guys know I had a time that was. Yeah, you. Okay, so she, so she let him know. Right. Okay. You can get off right here. I had a family emergency. You need to go right here. You're fine. I had a family emergency. Give your name tag in the front desk. <laughs> what a way to fire someone. Oh, no, no, no. You, you, can, you can just leave. Yeah. Now, granted, it is just, it's, it's a Macy. I mean, right. Macy's is going to go out of business, let's be honest. Right. What? You don't work here anymore. Yeah. I put my work in for this job. What you mean? I'm, I'm... <laughs> I put my work. All right. I don't know. Four Fire. hours too late. No, you're the. You I had a family emergency. My grandmother. Well, then you could tell someone. You don't just show up four hours too late. Oh, okay. So she didn't say anything. anything. Well, that's different. But still, all right. Let's let me pause real quick. Wow, it got really loud. Let's let's come on, Tizzy. Slow down. Come on, Tizzy. Doesn't he look like he's about to DJ something with this? Maybe. (laughs) Or like like, he kind it kind (laughs) of looks like he's gonna sing like Michael McDonald. (laughs) I keep forgetting (laughs) anymore. All right. Quickly and point something out. Uh, she says, I had a family emergency. He says, you can't just show up four hours late. You have to let someone know. If you pay attention to the very beginning of the video, she says, I told someone I was going to be late. I told y'all. And she told me that she contacted another manager. Wait, she told this guy? How'd this guy get involved? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. She's like, he got to the bottom of it. Why is he giving the fucking people's eyebrow? <laughs> Well, how did he get? Why did he get himself involved in a Macy's woman being fired? Uh, maybe he's the other manager. <laughs> he works at the Macy's <laughs> part time. He does social media yeah. with six hundred thousand yeah. followers, and then he's like, "I just do this he, on the weekends." He needs a steady income. <laughs> That's true. He needs a W two. Yep. 
and told them what was going on and let them know that she was going to be late. Either way, regardless, you don't fire someone in an elevator full of customers. I know that can't be part of Macy's policy. I mean, that is true. A little. Yeah. That's a little unprofessional. I mean, you don't usually say, hey, take a walk with me. Yeah. And you go to an office and you say, hey, you gotta go. Yeah. Pack it up. See. The only reason that... Now, granted, though, this guy's a manager to Macy's. This guy's probably making like 15 bucks an hour tops. You think yeah, this guy gives he, a fuck about yeah, his job probably either? probably doesn't. He's probably just pissed off because he had to work extra. Right. He, yeah, he probably makes like 40 to 45K a year. Yeah. Maybe 50. And it's a Macy's. Yeah. Every Macy's that I've been to is closing. Right. That there's a recording happening is because I guess he was talking about firing her and another employee was in the elevator and saw her in it and saw him get on and knew he was going to like do it. So he started recording. Uh, but him firing her in front of people isn't the worst thing he Uh-oh. did. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What do you call her, like a slur or something? Maybe. Made fun of her face? Maybe. Call her fat? Maybe. She wasn't really that fat, though. I don't know why I'd say that. Uh, she's, really. she's a little thick, but she ain't that yeah. fat. That's unreasonable. Oh, my God. No. I'm not, no. Yeah, we're not oh running on black God. people time. Get off. <laughs> and it, wow. And you know what's so bold about that? Is it's an elevator full of black people? He's the only white guy in the elevator. That's that's a fucking move, man. I don't know what you call that. That's that's some balls. Wow. <laughs> We're not running on black people time as he's the only white guy in the elevator. All right, let's see this reaction. Excuse me, what? You Excuse heard me? me? How about this? Equal, you want, you want this is in the ghetto. You don't see <laughs> what? What? Take, you want to see black yeah, people? Yeah, you don't take shit off of me. How about you give me Yo. your money? How about you give me your money then? Yeah. How about that? What? How about that? How about that? No, I'm not, I don't have money. This guy, no one wants to leave the elevator, by the way. They're just, they're sticking with this. I don't care. You're being racist. What do you mean? I'm not being racist. How about that? You want me to act bad? You want me to act like a monkey? What? This is ridiculous. You said that. I didn't say that. Get off the lobby. In an elevator. <laughs> what? I don't know how real this is. Oh, you think it's fake? I think it's fake. Well, this guy seems to believe it. Look at it. He's praying. <laughs> I, there's no way he said that, okay? And then the, the way she... Re- oh, you want me to act black? Like, that, no. That is a little... Wa- yeah, you know what? You, no you might one, be right. no one else in the elevator cares that he said that? That is true. Well, <laughs> I I think it's I think it's a planned thing. This get Tizzy's face. Look at him. He looks like he's about to ascend. You know what this looks like? He's making a face like Action Bronson would during the fucking Ancient Aliens thing he did <laughs> with the green screen. He's, he just took a dab. Yeah. He just went into another world. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let's let's see what he's got to say. Bitter, full of black patrons. He says we aren't operating on black time, and then says no, Shaniqua. This ain't the ghetto. What is it? It's Macy's. Is that the policy, Macy's? Is it the policy to fire someone in an elevator, let alone then say racist things toward her? And by the way, she says it's not the first time he said stuff like that to her. Uh Uh-oh. It's just this time it was caught on camera. And she says she thinks that other employee was recording because he had been saying he was going to fire her, and they wanted to be able to make fun of her getting fired later. But then she confronted them and said, I want that video. And after what that employee had seen, they were like, here you go, and gave her the video. So Macy's, I, I just curious. I don't um, think it's a real video. So you're thinking that Tiz- I think it's you think Tizzy got suckered? Or I do you t- think he's in on it? I think Tizzy got suckered. He okay. could be in on it because for some reason they told him, yeah. you know. But, yeah, it just. Oh, wait. There's a community note that's popped up since we opened this. Readers added context. They thought people might want to know. This is a stunt. See? The individuals featured in the video are not affiliated with or work at Macy's. Link to Macy's statement. Oh, they got, they got two well, statements. Well, they got big enough to, for Macy's to respond. <laughs> As At Macy's, we value acceptance, respect, and integrity and do not tolerate discrimination of any type. The individuals featured in the video are not associated with or work at yeah, Macy's. Yeah, see, because it would the other... The other people in the elevator would have been outraged, and they didn't say a fucking goddamn thing. Oh, they responded to this guy's vi- to Tizzy's video. What do you mean? Was this guy fired and is no longer affiliated, or does this mean not at a Macy's? This hydra- hydrated millennial's confused. He's like, "What do you mean they're not at Macy's? You mean you fired them?" They're like, "No, 
Macy's had, Macy's has to say, this is a stunt. The individuals featured in the video are not affiliated or work at Macy's. How dumb are people? This seems a bit odd. I can't find anything about this being a stunt. The people don't believe it. They don't believe the official Macy's account saying this. No, no, it's a lie. This is, why would Macy's lie? <laughs> this is wild. To, to save, save money. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're lying about to save money. They're... <laughs> Companies lie to the public all the time. I'd be surprised if any of them told the truth. I don't believe them. I need to see proof. How do you prove that? I don't know. Like, over- show me your work badge. They overcharge for everything, keep prices high when they have booming profits, pay their shareholders too much over the workers. Fuck them. I don't know about Keith or... I go to Macy's house for, like, nothing. Yeah. That's where you get the discount shit. I don't know. I think it's all made up. It was for views and clicks. People to go viral. I got suckered. You did get suckered. Well, Tizzy got suckered. Tizzy got really suckered. He did. And he then got... Macy's came out <clears throat> and fucking. Bro, how how dumb do you have to feel? So say you get a you put out a tweet like this. It gets three hundred sixty nine thousand views, and three hundred sixty nine thousand people watch you get suckered. Yeah. Tizzy. Does Tizzy respond to this? Let's see. Let's see what he's got to say. Uh, Tizzy sucks. A Macy's manager. Okay. Macy's responded that these two were never employees, and this is a stage skit, as he says, it's not him, and she continues to claim it's real. Oh, he's got an update video. Macy's responds. Let's, let's, okay, Tizzy explains. Should we listen to Tizzy's thing? Get a sample. I just want to see his big face again. I hate his big face. He's got a weird... I don't like his the faces he makes. He makes these weird... Like his eyes are rolled back here. He's the fact or fiction guy. <laughs> there were a few people in the comments, though, who said things like, this feels fake. This feels you did staged. Say that. And I understand, because that's what I thought when I saw it. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, you, you did not. You were like, this is, this is outrage. <laughs> yeah, why would you do that? She told him that she was going to be late. She had a family emergency. Yeah, and she said she spoke to he's, Yeah. He said he spoke to her, and then she said, oh, no, no, I was. I told them in advance. Yeah. But Tizzy, quit lying to us. What are you talking about? You got suckered. You insensitive jerk. I was like, this doesn't seem quite real. Like, no, really you, break. No, you thought it was real. Yeah, you idiot. Reason of him. And I went to the profile expecting to see other videos of, like, skits. And there weren't any. I see a lot of skits lately. That's a thing. People send me like, see this guy being whatever on a plane. No, that's the same plane set I've seen like 80 times. Oh, this racist neighbor. Yeah, no, I've seen that yard used like 12 different stories. And those accounts always have like a ton of those videos. This didn't. It just had other videos of her. So I reached out. And during the conversation about what happened, I asked her straight up. I wrote, and just to be clear, this is something I ask everyone, but this is real and not something staged, correct? She said, no, it's real. I want to sue because they're not firing him. I said, let's see what we can do. She said, this is not the first time he was racist to me. Macy's is trying to put this under the rug. I figured, okay. I, look, if this is real, this is terrible. This needs attention. So I'll make the video. And if it's not real, it's going to come out. As you this got comment catfished, says, Tizzy. Macy's said it's a yeah, stupid Tizzy. You Tizzy got, got catfished. Skits. And boy, did they. In comments on all the platforms, even in response comments. At Macy's, we value acceptance, respect, and integrity and do not tolerate discrimination of any type. The individuals featured in the video are not affiliated with or work at Macy's. And then this person said it wasn't the man's paid actor and they follow each other on TikTok and used a username of this actor. And then they said, we appreciate you clarifying the situation. These are actors posing as Macy's employees. A bunch of people are like, oh, Macy's is just trying to cover their ass. Let me tell you this. Uh, the corporate account doesn't come out and say stuff like this. Thank you, This Tizzy. opens them up. Thank you. Even yeah. worse if they're lying. I'm to glad them. that Tizzy's got her back. Yeah, Tizzy's. He's in a Tizzy. Dude. <laughs> Tizzy's like, a we don't know who that is, but they do. This would be a big problem for them. Tizzy's uh, a shapeshifter. I like that he's like coming and like, of course it's fake. And yeah. of course, they, it's like, bro, you spent four minutes earlier being like, this is unacceptable. I know. What is Macy's going to do about it? Well, they're going to say it's fake. <laughs> That's what they're going to do. <clears throat> you know what's not fake? What? This episode, and it's being brought to you by W. That's Go true. get your energy drink. Use the uh, promo code 64 Legends. 
www.gg. They got cans now. They got the powder drinks. They got the hydration station. It's all good shit. Use that promo code. You'll get 10% off. Pretty much covers your shipping. Go to w.gg and get some energy. All right. Well, that's what I'm going to do. It's pretty good. They got the cans. It's yeah, convenient. they do got the cans. You get it. But until next time, don't be a tizzy. And when something is fake, call it out the first time. And don't wait for Macy's to tell you it's fake. Tizzy.